and start with um, okay so this chapter my friends talk about luminaries luminaires you guys we talked about luminaries before luminaires is a, a whole assembly including the lamps that we talked about yesterday right the ballast the power connection the um diffusers that's what the code define them diffusers and all these and the frame of the fixture all these are called by code luminaires so we'll talk a few things about luminaires and laying them out and what's not here's what we're, what we're trying to achieve from this chapter guys um a few things um how do you locate luminaires in a space i walked you guys through uh, laying out luminaires in a space and we said the distance between the luminaires is typically twice as the distance between a luminaire and the wall that's the general rule there's a couple of specific rules that you can use for different type of luminaires i'll show you a really nice picture of that uh proper selection how to select and install luminaires uh, we're not electricians but it's good as a project manager to know that um attributes and characteristics of different types of luminaires you guys with with us in this project you use at least what probably maybe 15 16 types of luminaires from two by fours into cans, uh, into direct and direct lights that we use in this project. And um, the project that they have in this book also have a list of luminaires that they're using. So what's in it for you, Karen? Extra um, uh, examples where you can use different type. If, if you are encountering, if you encountered allocation, like an insurance office, and, uh, and you are supposed to bring, uh, decide what type of light to put there. Well, here's an example in this book that you guys can use. Did you guys hear me? That's what the whole idea of doing that. In closed closets, guys, because of the hazard of fire, we have specific rules how to install what type of luminaires. I'm sure you, Karen and Adam, you guys went through that one. Matt, probably not. Uh, how to install what type of luminaires are allowed to be installed in a closet dedicated for clothes. Um, and then what per square foot? What per square foot that the energy? You guys are in a few seconds when we're done with this presentation, we will be doing a come check energy code and we will take the um, lumens. We'll take how many watts per square foot that you installed in this room or does it meet the ASHRAE 90.1 uh, 2010 or 2012 or not? So that's your energy code. OK, here's how, how the NEC code. <clears throat> this is directly from NEC code defining the luminaire complete lighting unit. Uh, consists of a lighting source, so you have you have the lighting source, the lamp, uh, such as a lamp, but what's not together with the parts designed to position. So you need the physical things, the lighting source connect to the power. So you need a power supply. Also, it can connect ballast. Some of them are ballasted and diffusers to distribute the light. You need louvers and diffusers. Any comments, guys? What aluminium is a lighting source? A reflector, a lighting source, right? And then some some of them have ballast, ballasted, so you can pump the voltage high, maintain the RR. <laughs> a way of connecting it, and of course a physical a frame where you can mount this fixture, and then a few uh, a few things to direct the light to the location that you want it to go, and diffuse the light, distribute the light um, to also the location that you want. So that's my luminaire. Any comments, guys? Any questions about what luminaire is? We defined it a couple of times now. Energy issues. <clears throat> the NEC code book, guys, does not is not concerned too much about the energy. Lately, in 2014, we have been in 2014. Uh, energy issues and energy efficiency, guys. We will be doing it through contract. You have to pay a lot of attention to in the state of Minnesota energy code. We I believe we use ASHRAE 90.1 2010, Adam, and that's what we're going to be using now. I'm trying even to do actually 2012, actually 90.1 2012. Apply and see if we can meet the energy code. The whole idea, guys, the whole idea of the energy code when it comes to fixture is having efficiency, energy efficiency, um, and conservation laws in order to, you have to have an energy efficiency. Now, there's an organization you guys have seen this acronym before, IES file. They call them IES file. IES of International Illumination Society of North America. Those are set certain standards, uh, um, add them for certain areas. So they will tell you in a room like this, you need a 90 foot candle or a 70 foot candle or, or what's not. So they put the standards for best practices, they call them, uh, or good lighting practices. So all the stuff that I told you guys when you were trying to meet the average and visual, almost all of them are coming from um, IESNA. And the files, in visual that you are ex exporting 
um, the extension of these files by IES files. They call them IES files because they, they're, they're calculating the lumens and the foot candles. Okay, so be aware of that. There are two components to lighting case. The lighting science itself using IES files and doing the calculation. Then the energy component, which is you have to have efficient fixtures that can give you a lot of lumens for a smaller amount of watts. <clears throat> Okay, so this is just talking about guys um, um, energy saving by control in the state of Minnesota. You have to meet the energy code in two ways. You have to have efficient fixtures, guys. Actually, three ways. The the fixtures have to be efficient, the distribution have to be efficient, and the control have to be efficient. Did you guys hear me? Three ways. You have your fixture have to be efficient fixtures. You can't use a incandescent or um, um, electromagnetic ballast and meet the energy code. You cannot. You shall not install them. Efficient fixtures. You have to have an efficient ballast, efficient fixture. Number two, when you distribute them, it has to be efficient. Efficient. So the watt per square foot have to meet the energy code. And number three, the control. You can't get away um, with a commercial building with switches like this at them anymore. You have to have a low voltage control system, occupancy sensor in office building. You can't. If you put them, you, you wouldn't even meet the energy code. So control have to be automatic control means you have the fixture have to be efficient and the distribution have to be efficient. So be very, very, very aware of that. One. You're going to see it in a few seconds now when we go over. Um, as far as lamps to be permanently installed luminaires, combination of, uh, like I said, combination of efficacy, which is efficient lamps as well as occupancy sensor control um, and, dimmer, and dimmers. Dimmers is another way, uh, deharvesting is, these are the ways of meeting the energy code. If you're using compact fluorescent um, or, or typically fluorescent lamp P5 or T8, compact fluorescent, um, high efficiency um, halogen, you typically meet the energy code. So most of the engineering, engineering firms, guys, and for commercial building, they're going LEDs, either LEDs or T5, T5 or T8, two by four fixtures like these to meet the energy code, almost all location. If you, if you need a spotlight they also use compact fluorescent that's that's efficient um, efficient fixtures <clears throat> okay so this is in order to meet the energy code again this is the recommended well designed you have to your system have to be well designed high efficiency fixture luminaires and lamps have to be the lamps and the luminaires the ballast have to be high efficiency uh, various level of control uh, one of them is going to be occupancy sensors, timers, dimmers, deharvesting. All these guys together from an, from an efficient fixture and ballast into multiple control, automatic control, into a great distribution, well designed. That will get you to meet the energy code. Adam, you're going to see it in less than a second here when we, when we go to a calm check. The article in the NEC code book that concerned about the lighting fixture guys, article 110. The main concern of the NEC, could, uh, NEC with the fixtures, guys, is not the lighting distribution as much as the safety coming out of the lighting fixture. So it talks about boxes that rated to mount, to be mount, the fixture mounted to it based on the weight, um, and a couple of other things where you, locations that you need to install and what's not. Uh, support. You need the luminaires. And, and the lighting outlets, guys, if you have a lighting outlet, it has to be uh, supported from the structural structural members. Surface mounted, surface mounted luminaires, outlets and support must be roughed in. So you have to have, a, a, if it's surface mounted. So this talks a little bit about supporting these fixtures. They're heavy, guys. You have to support them either from, if they're too heavy, you support them from structural ceiling or from the... Um, suspended ceiling like this if if they're surface mounted obviously you have to have the right anchoring you guys have done a lot of anchoring with us in the, as electricians and and the right uh, rough in in order to properly support these fixtures if they're surface mounted or recessed or what's not they have a lot of support rods guys there's there's so many ways of supporting them you can support them with rods you can support them with the strings you can support them from the grid and a bunch of other things um, so this is just a couple of things. Manufacturers, guys, we depend a lot on the manufacturers, Adam, when we support the fixture. I have a big, huge chandelier in a room, and I don't know what type of box do I need. The manufacturer will specify the, the box that, that you need to, to use with that particular chandelier. Uh, if it's, if it's uh, um, yeah, so th there's, there's a lot of 
requirement guys for the box of the boxes that support the pictures exact dimension here's a couple of um, ways gentlemen of supporting your luminaires when it comes to luminaires if it's a suspended ceiling like this Adam you you throw them in a suspended ceiling um and you clip them to the suspended ceiling if you if you have um um if you have a, a, a if they're suspended from the if they're suspended from a ceiling then you have to have the proper hardware so this is just talk about the hardware and planning for these uh, for these uh, luminaires. <clears throat> uh, recessed luminaires, typically, if it's recessed like this one, Adam and and Matt, my friend, they have a a, a square box above it and a fixture whip that feed, feed each one of these uh, these fixtures. Um, and they have support by adjustable rails and what's not. So there's um, pay attention to the support of all this uh, this good stuff. Okay. Labeling. Information 430 should result in a safe information. So you have to have labeling, guys. Labeling typically industry directories and catalogs and what's not. You have to pay a lot, a lot of attention to the labels that comes with the picture. Typically, the picture will be labeled at least, guys, with the manufacturer name, the watts, and the voltage. So that's uh, based on the watts and the voltage and the manufacturer name. You can size these fixtures, install them based on a, a recommendation uh, from the manufacturer and what's not. If you have a fixture that rated the IC, IC fixtures, typically recess, this means go ahead and dump all the insulation that God created the top of it. No problem. It can be completely immersed in the, in the, um, in the insulation. There's something called maximum watt. So if they tell you the maximum watt for this picture is 75 watt, you shall not go and install 100 watt. You shall not, any fixture, guys. If they tell you the maximum watt that you can put, especially in candies and lambs, um, you, sh you, you should not exceed. If it says 100 watt, then you can exceed up to 100 watt. If it says 75, you're limited to 75. Um, the rating for the conductors, most of the conductors, guys, that come to the luminaire itself, when you put the conductors that come to the luminaire, these have to be rated for 90 degrees Celsius or higher um because it's hot inside the fixture especially in candice fixture if you're using candice fixture which probably in the commercial industry wouldn't be using it or even even um, compact fluorescent guys and, and leds they can they can also get hot so your conductors will be rated for um 90 degree if it says <laughs> and if it says none if it's marked with not marked iec it says non iec this means you have to maintain a, a space between the insulation and the fixture. Highly unlikely, guys, that you will have, if, if it's going to be, uh, um, insulation will be at the top of the fixture, 99.99% of the time we use IC. It's easier to install. So the same thing, maximum clearances, maximum lamp wattage, a temperature rating for the conductors are required. Um, Temperature rating, luminaire clearances, combustible. So these are all guys, when you're installing recessed luminaires, you're going to make sure as they IC rated, then you can bury them with insulation. If they are not, then you have to uh, uh, you have to have a space around them at three inches around the whole fixture. You know, um, also you have to have, pay attention to the voltage uh, as well as the maximum uh, lamp wattage that you can install in this fixture. Sloped ceiling, you went to a church, in the church guys, you see all these spotlights, right? And they're all sloped. If um, if a recessed luminaire, guys, are, does not say rated for sloped ceiling, you shall not install it in a sloped ceiling. Did you guys hear me? So if it's a sloped ceiling, just any conventional recessed luminaire is not rated to work in a sloped ceiling. If the ceiling is sloped, then you have to install one that says sloped ceiling. Everybody got that idea? Sloped ceiling. Uh, thermal protection. Um, almost all the cans, guys, that comes, especially uh, incense lamps and the cans that are recessed, they have to have something uh, that comes from the factory with thermal protector. I don't know how much you wired Adam and, and, uh, and Karen, but if you go to a house and there's a fixture keep turning on and off, anybody have seen that one? That's getting hot. There's a little device, guys, like a thermal, thermal protector, a little device. If it gets so hot inside the fixture, instead of burning your house, it opens and turn that fixture off until it cools down and it turns it on again. So if you have a fixture in a location, especially typically above the kitchens, if you have a couple of cans, when they start heating for Thanksgiving is coming, start 
cooking and what's not, these fixtures start turning on and off for a while, that means they're just getting hot. Um, so you, they're getting hot, either circulate the air in, in the area so they can cool. So um, don't go bypass that one. They are meant to protect you from burning your house. So these are have to be uh, typically with recess luminaries, typically with incandescent lamps or, and fluorescent lamps. <clears throat> okay, very important to provide an exact rough end for surface mounted luminaires. Surface mounted luminaires, guys, when you rough them in, of course, since they're surface um, um, surface mounted, you have to know the exact location. You have no, you know, you can't mingle around. Um, uh, metallic outlets and boxes. You have to have an equipment grounding conductor, guys, with all the fixtures, all your fixtures. You can see metallic outlets and boxes. Uh, you can use multi-wire brand circuits, but when you use a multi-wire brand circuit, Adam, you are to simultaneously disconnect all your multi-wire brand circuit at the service. That's a requirement by NDC codebook. Um, suitable for temperature encounter. Requires a brand circuit conductors that terminate in a luminaire. This section is very important because it tells you if when here's my fixture, if I bring a wire to my fixture, this most likely will be rated for 90 degree uh, uh, Fahrenheit, um, Celsius, 90 degrees Celsius. Because <laughs> inside the fixture, Adam, it gets very hot. So you need your conductors to be rated. You can't use 75. You have to be rated for um, uh, 90 degree or the temperature encountered. Here is how we, they wire a bunch of luminaries, guys. You've seen this before. In a three-phase system, you can either group them together. Here's all these fixtures on phase A, these fixtures on phase B, and these fixtures on phase C, as you can see. And they're all using a neutral. And I'm going to bring to your attention, guys, all these <coughs> are disconnected. That's one way. Um, right here, you can use two single-pole, three-pole circuit breakers. Or you can use single two pole and uh, a single pole. You can use single pole circuit breakers or three pole circuit breakers as long as they are they are simultaneously disconnected. Everybody understand, guys? Multi wire brain circuit. They have to have a simultaneously disconnected over temperature device. We talked about that one a couple of times. Disconnect means Karen in two thousand eight. I want to say they started requiring all fixture double ended fixture fluorescent lamps like these T five and T eight. To have a disconnect because the generators were climbing on ladders, changing the ballast and getting zapped by 277. So the code now requires <coughs> all these fixtures, guys, with some exceptions, to have a disconnect means. Disconnect means uh, to disconnect the ballast, the ballasted fixtures, two wires. If you have a multi wire branch circuit, um, you also simultaneously have to disconnect the neutral. If it's coming from a multi wire branch circuit, Adam, you have to simultaneously disconnect the neutral. Almost all these disconnect. Where did it, uh, I'll show you the picture of it uh, in a second. So these are disconnects that they put right inside the inside the fixture. When you open the fixture to change the ballast, you unplug the fixture. This fixture is dead. Easy to change the ballast for. Okay, so that's disconnecting the fixture. Multi-wire brand circuits also, guys, have to be simultaneously disconnected. Um, we talked about this one, uh, multi brand circuit, simultaneously disconnected, uh, leading allowance calculation. Um, okay, if you have an incandescent, now the allowances for the calculation, guys, for the incandescent luminaire is based on the watts of the luminaire, the watts of the luminaire itself. Um, if it's a fluorescent, it's based on the ballast. This is very important when you guys do the calculation. When you have an incandescent lamps, there's only the consumption is only done by the incandescent lamps. If you have a ballast, the ballast will consume a little bit of energy as well as the lamps. For example, if you guys have a 32, two lamps, 32 each in a fixture like this, add them up, 32 plus 32 give you 64, right? Right? Now, when you go to the actual watts that this fixture is consuming, it might be 70 instead of uh, of 64. Why 70? Because the ballast itself will consume some energy. Did you guys hear me? If you have a ballast, the ballast will consume some energy. <coughs> so that's <coughs> so that's what um, what the fluorescent does. There's a couple of schedules, guys. I'll show you some of them here. Okay, all the way to luminaires in a closed closet. The, the code defines um, 
close closet gentlemen as non-habitable tell that to my son non-habitable room space intended to store your clothes basically uh, garments and apparel so these are uh, not to sleep in not to cook in that's your clothes closet now if you put clothes and you put a lighting fixture right next to it what do you get you get potential fire hazards so then you see code book and the smarter than chad decided that there shall be certain fixture can be installed in these uh, a closed closet and others cannot shall not be installed and if you install them you have to maintain a distance from the the place where you store your clothes and we'll go over these here's a <coughs> 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 Let me summarize it, guys. For um, when you put close cl uh, cl um, uh, lights in a closet, uh, Karen and Adam, you have to maintain a distance of six inches from six inches from where the where the uh, fixture is and where you store your clothes. For all types of fixture, except if it's LED and incandescent, LED and incandescent. And they are surface mounted like these, then it becomes 12 inches. <coughs> One more time. You have a fixture allowed to be in a closed closet. If it's recessed or surface mounted, recessed or surface mounted, not hung, you can't hang a fixture in a closed closet. Shall not hang a fixture in a closed closet. Number one. But if it's recessed or surface mounted, the distance that you have maintained is six inches. Except if that fixture is LED or incandescent lamps and surface mounted not recessed then they, they, it becomes 12. that's basically summarizing the whole rules for the um for lighting fixture i'll show you a couple of other pictures too uh, what spare area <coughs> calculation guys you're going to be doing it with your friend chad <coughs> image code that's what we're going to be doing in a few seconds here you have to meet like for the energy code for a co office building is one what per square foot the NEC code book guys allow you to use three and a half volt amp. The, the NEC, but the energy code require you to maintain one watt per square foot. You're going to see when we when we calculate them. Um, so code usually evaluate illumination on the basis of average watt per square foot. So I'm going to be talking about watt per square foot in your area. Um, if you have an incandescent lamps, you have no problem because they are rated in watts. So you just multiply it by how many of them you have. If you have a fluorescent, right, <coughs> and high intensity discharge, they are rated in volt amp, required for circuit design, and what's required for, so you have the, for circuit design, you need the volt amps, but for the energy, you need the watts. So we're going to see, we're going to go to the schedule in a second, Adam, to the lighting schedule, and pull all these watts of these uh, fluorescent lights to put them in an energy code, not the volt amps. The volt amps will be slightly. What's the difference, guys? <coughs> volt amp of a fixture can be 100, say 100 uh, volt amp. Watt of that fixture typically is 90 watts. What's the difference? Is the power factor. And um, the energy code, guys, uh, the rules for energy code require all these fixtures to have at least 90% power factor. So 90% power factor. So that's basically it. Let me show you a couple of um, things on that in these fixtures. Um, this is a couple of things, guys, about placing your fixture. I told you guys, if you have one fixture, Adam, and you only place a fixture in the room, where do you put that fixture in the room? One fixture. In the center of the room. Matt, right in the center of a room. Now, if you have uh, different fixtures, then how do you place them? I told you guys when we were laying out our fixture, I said the distance twice from the wall to <coughs> to the ceiling. Those guys, their recommendation, not twice, one third. Can you guys see the one third? So if the distance between these, if, if you have cans, if the distance here is nine feet, um oops nine feet here the distance from here to the wall is three and from here to the wall is three if they're camps if they're like these adam two by fours they recommend guys to have an average preferred two and a half from the wall here and <coughs> here's the maximum minimum two one six 
distances here from the edges and in, in between them, the distance would be um, D, the distance will be my D. So that will give you up. I made it, it made it easier for you guys. And I said, when we lay out our fixture, regardless of the time, the easier, I know the software will lay out all these for you. But to make it easier, if you don't use usual, is the distance between the fixture is twice as the distance between the fixture and the wall. <laughs> a few other recommendations. If you have <coughs> lighting fixture like this, guys, same thing. Can you guys see the two and a half from the wall? And from here, re referred one foot. So you go one foot from the edge, two, two feet, and you start laying out your fixture. <coughs> same thing, two feet, one foot and start laying out your fixture, guys, from center to center and what's not. So these are, can you guys look at these as other means of recommendation? Um, so the rule, the general rule is twice the distance from the wall. Uh, the distance between the fixtures, center to center is twice the distance from the wall. But these goes, take into consideration what type of fixture, is it a can or is it uh, surface mounted? or is it a uh, floor set? Now, if you have cans, guys, you might have to go smaller. If you put cans, cans, these are surface mounted fixtures. <coughs> cans, you might have to go smaller distances. All the hardware that you can use with your fixtures, you guys will look at it and um, different type of fixture, different type of hardware that comes with them. Fixtures, guys, they, typically they have a box and from the box, you bring the brand circuit, then there's a fixture web um, and that fixture web, gentlemen, uh, typically six uh, six inches uh, AC or MC or what's not, six feet. And that's how they go and feed these fixtures, fixture web. Um, if you have a can, uh, IC can, you can dump all the insulation on the top of it. If it's not IC can, uh, uh, Brian, then you have to maintain a three inches around that fixture. So depending on the fixtures. <coughs> right here. You have to maintain three inches from the insulation and the combustible materials unless it's rated for IC. You can go from can to can to can, guys, when you wire them, but you can't go to a receptacle. Different type of support. You can see how they're taking all these fixtures and supporting them. Finish ceiling all the way to the ceiling. Um, opening to go to the box. We talked about the circuiting, how you bring... Um, multiple lights on one circuit and you group them together with a neutral one way of doing it here's a disconnect for the balance atom <laughs> i'm sure you guys wired it with us <coughs> if, if you have a fixture like this uh, brian right above your head the code require you guys inside it to have that little disconnect where you can disconnect the ballast so you you push it right here and you open it so the fixture will be tied here um, and, and the ballast the ballast is also here, ballast. So the circuit is going to be coming from right here, 20 amp, when neutral. So you disconnect it, it's dead, it's easy, safe to work on it. That's uh, required in all double-ended luminaires. <coughs> A lot of engineers, guys, have, um, <coughs> instead of having multi-wire brain circuit, they use and neutral with every circuit. I don't know if you guys can see that, and neutral with every circuit. They don't use multi wire brand circuits. It's becoming so preferred, guys, because if you connect them together from survivability point of view, one of them trip, they could take the others. So trying to avoid the multi wire brand circuit. Okay, closed closet. For closed closet, guys, uh, the area that you're, it's defined by code as the area where you put your clothes is 24 inches here. Uh, 12 inches here, and the height is six feet. You guys can see the height, six feet. That area <coughs> is my 24 from here to here, and this is my 12 uh, from here to here, 12 uh, inches. This area, sacred cow, you shall put only your clothes on it. That's the shelf, and where you, where you hang your clothes down at the bottom there. Now, from you have to clear. Do you see how they define the area where, you, where your clothes are going to be? Six feet, 24 inches, 12 inches shelf. Or or if the shelf goes higher, the ceiling too. It goes all the way to, to the ceiling. And like that shelf, can you hide? That goes all the way to the ceiling of the um, that closet. Now, 
if you have a closet like this one, guys, the same thing. They take um, they take 24 here, the closet, walk-in closet, that area. <coughs> A is 12, um, B is 24. 12, 12 give you 24 here. You can see all this area is a circuit call. What does that mean? If I want to put a fixture, gentlemen, in this area here, so uh, Adam can find his uh, suit here, um, I have to put my fixture. I put one fixture here, one fixture here. They're surface mounted. They're surface mounted. Um, okay, so the distance from here to the fixture, that distance cannot be more than six, uh, less than six inches. Same thing from here, six inches. Um, for for surface mounted fluorescent, um, if it's surface mounted LEDs or incandescent, this becomes what? If it's surface mounted, this becomes instead of six inches, it becomes 12 inches. If you recess it, if you recess them, you put them like this, recessed, then the distance, no matter what, gentlemen, your distance, no matter what, six inches. Six inches. Now, Karen, you know, you can't hang a fixture like this in a closed closet, no matter what. You can't hang a fixture like this. Hang it. Why? Because it's going to be a hazard. That's it. That's the rules, really. Six and twelve. Everything is six atom except surface mounted ink, surface mounted incandescent or fluorescent. Twelve. From these areas. Um, here's the all the rules that we just talked about. Summarized for you guys here. I know some of you have done that. So very repetitive for you. So I'm going to start with the fixtures you shall not install in any secret book. An open fixture like this, incandescent open or partially open like this, guys, it's a hazard. You have to have a globe over it. <clears throat> you can't do that. Uh, pendant luminaires, no. Um, pendant lamp holders, no. You can't do all these are must not be installed, period. Then surface mounted, you can put here's a surface mounted luminaires, guys. Uh, incandescent uh, or um, you can have surface mounted fluorescent too like this, open fluorescent, no problem. So, the distance, here's to summarize the whole distance, gentlemen. Everything, Adam, you can see here, everything is six inches, no problem. Six inches except LED and incandescent at 12 inches. LED and incandescent at 12 inches. Any comments, gentlemen, any questions? So that's your closed closets installing. You can see how they measure them, uh, Brian, from the area where you store your uh, clothes. Then they talk about guys different type of control and different kind. Here's the thermal uh, um, thermal protection, a tiny little switch guys activated by temperature. If it he if it heats above a certain temperature, it will open. It will open. Different type of luminaires. These are the luminaires that they're using in the project in the commercial pro their commercial project. Can you guys see that? So let's give you an idea of what type of luminaire that they're using. Exit signs. You guys have done that with me. And I don't want to go over these one. I want to go over the first one. Adam, they're using a style A fixture. It's a WSC-232 UNV ERA8 C fig, whatever. It's a T8 by pin, 32 watt, 28 lumens, pure lamb, rapid start, 48 inches. The Kelvin is 35,000. That's the that's a description of the lamb. Number of lamps are two. Uh, ballast type, they're having a nut here, typically electronic. Surface mounted and description is decorative. So can I bring your attention, guys, to this one here? Uh, Lumineer, uh, input watts per luminaire, the total input watts. Um, so input watts per luminaire, the total input watts, <laughs> how many of them? Here's the input watts per luminaire, Adam. That's the number that we're going to be using later on in the energy code. Any comments, guys? Any questions? When it when I flip into the energy code and I tell you guys to go to your schedule and go find the watts for your fixture, you're going to go right in here and here's the watts for your fixture. You're going to use this number into the calculation for the energy code. So that's just their schedule, luminaire schedule. Um, there's a few of them, guys, that they're using. Um, I I always encourage uh, students, guys, to use them as another example of a schedule lighting fixture that you can use in different applications. Here's e-fixture, LEDs, they're using a couple, couple of LEDs, second floor. Okay, so that's basically all the, um, all the, 
the fixture. So they have a, a, a three, four pages and I'm full of Lumineer schedule. Brian, any comments, any questions, my friend? To summarize, gentlemen, comments, questions? Okay. Um, to summarize, this chapter, guys, please, I can't uh, bleed more. Read them, guys. Your, um, this is the knowledge I'm going to take with you. Um, this is another way of laying out your, your lumineers. I showed you guys one way. This is a, another uh, way to get into the details. Uh, they have schedules that's really nice fixtures for certain applications. Use them. If you are met with um, insurance office um, and you need to pick up a type of fixtures for it, and you need to be creative. Here's an example. I have no idea what, what to do. Of course, you can always call the vendors and they'll be more than happy to give you the best uh, fixture for the application. But if you want to sound a little bit more intelligent, um, here's an example. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? So please read these, please, when you guys are done. Do the homework. The homework has 10 points for the homework. If you don't give me your homework, you lose 10 points. So. Um, I took the homework last week. If you haven't given me your, your homework, you still have another chance for reduced uh, reduced value, though. Um, okay, I want to give you guys 10 minutes, and after that, I'm going to switch to the energy code. With the energy code, to get ready, here's what I would like you to do for energy code, to get ready. Have your um, um, lighting schedule with you electronically, the lighting fixture schedule, either from visual, electronically, or on a hard copy with you. You need this one. Uh, the software, you guys have the software, and we need um, the CAD file. The CAD file that we have, we need CAD so we can find the area. Did you guys hear me? Go open CAD, the floor plan CAD, open it, and have the lighting schedule ready, and uh, uh, come check. These three things you need them to do the energy code. Ten minutes. Thank you. <clears throat>